first one is go to the shop and buy strawberry seeds and decorations if you're into that. If you're able to plant the strawberries by the 16th, you'll end up getting two harvests of strawberries, which, if put into the seed maker, can be reinvested into planting next year and can make you a lot of money. If you're really ambitious, you can plant with speed grow on the day of the festival when you get out, and you can get three harvests of strawberries. The second and more obvious thing you're going to want to do is participate in the egg hunt. You have to get at least nine eggs if you want to win, and if you win, you get this nice straw hat. Or, or a thousand gold if you already got the straw hat. Yeah, I'd expect something a little cooler than a thousand gold for a second time, but you know, whatever. Moving on to the next event, the flower dance. It occurs on the 24th of spring, and it allows you to dance with any of the bachelor or bachelorettes you have four or more hearts with. If you don't have four hearts with them, they will reject you. Some will do it kindly, and others will not. Thanks, Haley. The only other thing to do at this event is go to the shop. There's a couple things that might be interesting here, such as the rare crow number five, and the recipe to craft the tub of flowers, which is useful if you want to get that stupid crafting achievement. Continuing along, we have the luau on summer 11th. You make a soup as a community, and depending on how good or bad the soup is, you'll gain or lose friendship points. There are several factors that influence the quality of the soup. The first one is item quality, which is like something having a gold star or a silver star or a radium star or no star. Next is how much it heals you if it's eaten. And lastly is the base sell price of the item. It's good if you make the best soup possible, because if you do, you get half a heart of friendship with everyone in the town. However, if it's your first year, it can be kind of hard to get the best response. The most feasible thing that you would have that would get you the best response would be the Gold Star Cauliflower. Even if you don't get the best response, it's not the end of the world. You can still get a good response with something really easy to find, like the strawberries you might have grew from the egg festival. This will get you about one-fourth of a heart with all the villagers. However, if it's not your first year, there's other easy ways to get the best response. High value gold or iridium star forageables like purple and chanterelle mushrooms will get you the best response, as will things like silver star large oat milk. Next up, on the 28th of summer is the dance of the moonlight jellies. There's nothing really here to do other than watch the jellies, but it's pretty cool. along we have the Stardew Valley Fair, which occurs on the 16th of fall. This festival has a special currency called Star Tokens, and there's several ways to get them. The first one is by doing the Grange display. To participate in this competition, you have to put up to nine items in this little box here. If you want to get the full prize of a thousand Star Tokens, your display must be rated a 90 or higher when it's evaluated by Mayor Lewis. The scoring works as follows. You get 14 points automatically, just for participating, and then you get one point for each item you put in, or you lose a point for each space left empty. So as long as you fill all nine spaces, you already have 23 points. Next up, you get points for diversity. You get five points for each of the following categories you fulfill. Animal products, artisan goods, cooking, fish, fruits, minerals, vegetables, and forageables. You should note that flowers and tree saps also get lumped in with the forageables. Next up, you get points for sell price and quality. Obviously, the higher quality and the higher sell price are better, and I'll have a chart on the screen showing you how many points you get for each specific combination of quality and price. In the end, as long as you have a good diversity of items, it's not actually that hard to win first place. But if you're still having trouble, you can just put Mayor Lewis's shorts there and he'll excuse you and give you 750 star tokens. So that's an interesting use. You still get them back, so you can use this every year if you want. Now let's talk about some other ways to get star tokens. You can play a fishing mini game where you can get up to 200 star tokens per 50 gold. You can play a slingshot mini game, which is a lot harder, but you can get up to 250 star tokens per 50 gold. You can smash a stone for free, and you can get up to one star token per time. That's not very efficient. Speaking of not very efficient, it's not very money efficient, but you can buy star tokens for 50 gold per token. And it's, it's fast, but it's not worth doing because at late game you'll have good items to put in the green display anyway. And you can gamble for more tokens. You should put your money on green, and you should always bet half of it, because there's a 75% chance of it to hit green, so as long as you bet half of it, you won't lose it all, and then you'll end up gambling all the way up to 3,400, where you can buy out the entire shop. Speaking of the shop, there's a lot of interesting stuff you can buy there. You can buy a star drop and permanently increase your energy, you can buy the first rare crow, and you can buy a fedora so you can go around fedora tipping people. Next up, we're going to talk about Spirit's Eve. 
It occurs on Fall 27th, and there's several things to do here. First of all, you can go to the shop and buy stuff. You can buy Rare Crow number 2, Jack Lanterns, and the Jack Lantern recipe. Another thing you can do is find the Golden Pumpkin. You have to go through the maze, and when you come to something that looks like a dead end, walk through where there's an arrow sign. Then go up through the cave, and go up and to the right, and then, once you can't go any farther, go down and to the right. You'll end up reaching this chest with the Golden Pumpkin inside. There's no real purpose for the gold pumpkin other than to sell it for 2,500 gold. Next up, we have the Festival of Ice. It takes place on Winter 8th, and it's a fishing contest. Winning the fishing contest gets you three tackles and a sailor's cap, and then 2,000 gold if you've already won in the past. To win, you need to catch at least five fish. The biggest tip I have involves standing close to the water's edge and then doing a small cast out. This saves you from having to try to snipe to find the hole. Other than that, you just have to be good at fishing. You don't even have to be that good, but leveling up your fishing may also help you. The next event we're going to talk about is the night market. It starts on winter 15th and runs to the 17th. There's several interesting things about it, so I guess I'll just go down on a list. Coffee can be obtained for free every 10 minutes. Boats sell decorations, items, seeds, furniture, and whatever. A painter sells a total of 9 different paintings, one each day for 1,200 gold. It takes 3 years to collect them all. You can go on a fishing trip on a submarine for 1,000 gold, where you can catch midnight squid, blobfish, spookfish, sea cucumbers, super cucumbers, and seaweed. Apparently you can also catch a pearl there, rarely, but I've never caught one. You can watch a mermaid show, and after the show you can get a pearl by clicking on the shells in this order. One, five, four, two, three. The traveling merchant who usually has a cart now sells her wares from a raft. And you can see her pig next to her. It's pretty cute. The shrouded figure near Willie's shop teleports you home for 250 gold. This is useful if you want to stay up all night fishing. And interestingly enough, unlike other events, this event does not pause time. Time will continue normally. Lastly, there's the Feast of the Winter Star on Winter 25th. You basically play Secret Santa and give an assigned villager a gift for five times the friendship points. Then you get a gift from someone else. Usually they're useless, but sometimes they're not. Usually Clint doesn't give useless gifts. He may even give you an Iridium Bar. Thanks, Clint. Well, that's all I have for you today.